point out any problems that you see with this wall framing. Issue one, the load path. Issue two, the stacked wall. In that video, I talked about the issues of stacking walls and privately, many people reached out curious how I corrected this situation. Bro, what the? I said I wasn't gonna do this, but here we go. These solutions won't work for every single scenario. So don't take this information and run off into the wilderness using it on your project, unless you talk to a structural engineer like me. Now, there is one solution that would work for every single case. Just rebuild it, bro, or sis. All right, let's go to the desk and I'll show you exactly how I corrected the situation. So here's a model replica of the wall. It's not exact, but it'll illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. So, so the first thing that we need to address before anything is the issue of the low path. We need to add additional studs underneath these Jack and Keane studs so that the concentrated load from the header can go straight down to the foundation without jumping around from stud to stud and possibly overstressing this or this stud. So let's fill that in. Now, another step that I can't really show here, but it's crucial is that the all of these studs that we just added in need to all be nailed and glued together so that those studs can act as one cohesive unit. So now that we got those filled in, we need to now address the discontinuity between the studs from the lower wall and the studs from the upper wall. For this, I recommended a coiled strap, something like this or like these coiled straps here. And they're typically used in shear walls of multi-story wood buildings to resist the tension force created at the end of a shear wall when it counteracts a lateral wind force. So I necessarily didn't have to use a strap. I could have specified like a hot rolled or cold form steel plate, but why go through all the trouble of designing a plate with fasteners and everything like that when a strap already has load information as far as its tension capacity. So tension ties resist tension and I'm using it in an application where the wood is bending. So why am I doing that? So the mechanics behind a wood post that's bending is that there are two internal forces happening in the stud. Above this line, the stud is in compression. Below the line, the stud is in tension. Stand up and bend from your waist as far as you can. You should feel contraction in your stomach, which simulates compression, and you should feel your back or spine stretching, which simulates tension. If I know what the bending force is and the size of the stud, then I can calculate what the internal tension and compression forces are, and then size the strap to be able to make the studs at the lower wall and the upper wall continuous. But from this point forward, make sure your single story tall walls are framed with the correct size and species of wood, and they are continuous from the floor all the way up to the roof. 